Welcome to Convergence Healing with Peter Bedard, where we empower you to heal your pain on every level of your being, body, mind, spirit. Our show is about sharing solutions for creating the life you want. We invite you to stand up and choose a life of health, happiness, and joy. And we're here to show you how. This is Convergence Healing. All right, here we are. This is our episode number four, a monumentous day for us at Convergence Healing. And I'm so excited to actually welcome with me the amazing Dr. Kathy Gruber. Kathy is actually a personal friend of mine, and I met Kathy at the Hypnosis, the Hypno Thoughts Convention. And I met you actually two years ago, but we really actually bonded last year. And we've had so much fun that we're sharing a booth together at HypnoThoughts. Yeah. HypnoThoughts is a wonderful convention in Vegas. If you're interested in, in hypnosis and the subconscious mind, check it out. August of 2017. And we're going to jump in now with Kathy. Kathy, and one of the things I really was drawn to her because of is because Kathy's really focused on body work. She is not only a incredible trapeze artist... Right? Uh, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's an incredible trapeze artist. And she's super strong. And she is a body worker. She's a professional massage therapist. As well as a doctor of... Natural health. Natural health. Awesome. Love that. Kathy's books are out here. And uh, Kathy, I wanted to bring you on the show because so much of what we do in the holistic world is focused on on esoteric kind of energetic mm -hmm. healing and stuff like that and then people do the massage or chiropractic or acupuncture and that type of stuff but a lot of people don't really understand what massage is in fact it blows my mind when I meet people who've never even had a massage yeah it's weird I get a lot of those I have a lot of first timers and I right. love working on them because I, I take a lot of pride in what I do. I've right. been doing massage for 25 years. Right. So when I get that first timer on the table, I know I've ruined them for anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> they said this to me like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do never like the rest. first time, huh? I guess. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, massage has so many benefits, and we know it feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's no doubt about that, but it helps circulation. It helps with flexibility. It helps with muscle health. It helps you detox. You know, there are so many phenomenal things, and Touch is so important. Absolutely. A and unfortunately, we hear so much about bad touching in our society, mm -hmm. and whether it's elder abuse or just neglect, mm -hmm. uh, we or need... Or inappropriate sexual touch. Or inappropriate sexual touch, Absolutely. which we don't want to mix with massage in any way. Uh, so having that healthy touch, it helps you know your own body, and you have another set of eyes, which some people don't think about. I have actually mm. found growths and things on clients that they didn't know they had wow. and i had one woman with melanoma that she would not have gone and got it checked if it wasn't for me saying that thing started to get its own zip code you need to go have this checked right. so it's another set of it's another person on your health team and i think we have to we have to have a team to help us out with our bodies absolutely and you know the thing i'm always promoting is a body mind spirit way of healing and bringing in this body work mm -hmm. and a lot of people neglect it and you had said something that really it always hits me, is this idea that people don't get touched, right? They yeah. don't get touched or they're afraid of touch. So, and a lot of people I know, because uh, I've said this to people, I've, I've asked people to go and do some sort of body work or, you know, we taught in my, my work, we actually develop a conversation with the pain mm -hmm. yeah. and the pain will often say things like, hey, I need to go be touched. I need to go get a massage. I need, you know, something like that. And they're afraid. Yeah. So someone who is afraid of massage or says, well, it hurts. I just don't like it. What do you say to them? I think it's really vastly important, like any other relationship, to find someone that you jive with. Mm -hmm. And you can open any phone book. Do we still have phone books? You can open any... <laughs> they do exist. Though, they do. Yeah. They hold things. And there's digital phone books. Right, right, right. They yeah. hold the computer monitor up higher. <laughs> uh, but you, you can find so many different resources to get a practitioner that works for you. Right. And that's vastly important. And I think one of the things that's changed in our society is we have these now shopping center massage parlors popping up mm -hmm. and these discount massage chains. Mm -hmm. And that, that's great. If you just need a quick rub down and you don't have any injuries, you don't have any pre-existing conditions, you just want to get slimy and sleepy, I think that's fabulous. <laughs> slimy and sleepy. If you really have an issue, mm -hmm. and I cannot emphasize this enough, if you have an issue, 
-hmm. Go to a practitioner who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I do expert witness work, and I'm just about to start a case where a woman claims she was injured, but she went in with such horrible back problems, and she went to a practitioner that had no business working on someone with back problems, but she didn't tell them. And now she's having this giant lawsuit, which... You know, it's it's not an appropriate lawsuit. She should not have been in that place getting that type of work. Yeah, but she shouldn't have been in that place. She should not have been right. in that place. Right. You have to communicate with their practitioner. Mm-hmm. So find someone that works for you. Get referrals. Meet them ahead of time. I've had people, you know, drill me with questions on the phone for 10 or 15 minutes before they even make an appointment. That, that's totally fine. That's why we're here mm-hmm. is to help people. Mm-hmm. So find that person that's going to help you and then communicate everything you can with them. That's so important to do. Right. Now, you said slimy and sleepy, <laughs> and I know you're said to humor. I know. Uh, and it's hilarious. But for somebody who maybe has never gone to a massage therapist, are they going to get slimed? Like, that, in my, right, my right, head, right, right. I think of, you know, the ghost and Ghostbusters and it's putting boogers all over you, basically. It's sliming you. I do my best not putting boogers on clients. That's good. Uh, that's good. No, uh, what that's I mean by that is... Important, you know, that's important to, practices. Right, yeah, exactly. Important. I don't think that's written down anywhere. No, no, no it's it's understood. Yeah. It's unwritten. Um, no, what I mean by those, there's various types of massage, and this is the perfect question to lead me into that. There's Great. your very basic Swedish massage, which is light touch, lots of lotion or oil. And to me, because I do deep tissue trigger point medical massage work, to me that is very surface. And again, if you've got like a pain pattern or if you've got uh chronic illness like fibromyalgia or sometimes scleroderma, things like that, you can't handle deep work. So the Swedish is lots of long strokes, very soothing. It makes you sleepy and it puts a lotion all over you. So that's kind of what I meant by the slimy and sleepy thing. It's very... I understood what you meant. I got it. For those of you at home. Uh, But it's very surface work. Uh, It can get a little bit deeper, but not as deep as what I do, which is really getting to the root of the problem and helping you get rid of it. And it's interesting because I've had a lot of men think somehow they're going to lose their edge by getting a massage or that's a girly thing to do I've or never and, and I'm heard thinking that, really? do you watch the NFL wow. you think these guys right? aren't getting 3 hours of massage after they're oh, done getting the crap beat out of them Absolutely. so uh, yeah I mean this is not <laughs> emasculating in any way to go get body work athletes do this every day it ups your game it puts you in a better state of performance and that's what it's all about yeah you know when I was a kid and I did a lot of dance work uh, mm-hmm. massage I unfortunately didn't have the money, the education, or the background to actually go get massages. I should have been, uh, but when we would we would give each other back rubs, mm-hmm. you know. So all the students in the class and stuff and between before and after classes, we were constantly rubbing each other's legs down and each other's backs. You know, after dancing five, six, seven hours a day, your body is stressed, right? And those muscles are just like this, right? Especially if you're a kid and you're probably not drinking enough, you're not getting enough fluids, you're not doing any of that kind of stuff. Most of us don't eat properly, all that type of stuff. So the muscles are just like this. And I can't tell you how much I love body work. Mm -hmm. It is my saving grace. Uh, For those of you who don't know, you know, I've had, well, most of you probably do because I talk about it too much, but (laughs) I had so many injuries done to me, right? Uh, where I was slammed into the back of a semi-truck. My body was in a huge amount of trauma for a long period of time. And I wish somebody would have sat me down and said, one of the best things you can do is body work. Because it just didn't happen. You know, I did all kinds of other therapies, and I struggled into all types of different things, and I eventually healed myself. And I knew that, you know, massage felt great, but I didn't understand the medicinal quality of it. Can you tell us a little bit more? Like you said, you do medical massage. Right. What What does that mean? So for someone like you, post-injury, I would be the person to come to. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of referrals from chiropractors, a lot of referrals from orthopedic surgeons. Mm-hmm. I have worked on people pre- and post-op, mm-hmm. as well as injuries of all types, whether it's a physical injury. You know, massage is also great for the spirit and the emotions also, uh, we hold these things in our bodies. So you're not just working on the muscles. You're having energetic exchange. You're having emotional release. You know, we certainly don't go for that. I don't try to make people cry on my table. But there's been, there's been I, no, I bet you no boogers and no crying. There's <laughs> no two, two very crying. specific rules. Uh, but if that comes up during the massage, because our bodies remember. Mm-hmm. Our bodies remember these things. Absolutely. And just the same way people say, oh, the deep tissue hurts. One, it shouldn't hurt. 
So let's get that out of the way. I hit some spots that are mm -hmm. tender and sore. The same way if you do a really deep stretch in a yoga pose, mm -hmm. you're going to feel that pushing of that boundary. You're going to feel that discomfort. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being nothing and 10 being I want to jump off a table and kill you, you shouldn't let it get past like a 7 or an 8. Right. And if you're working with a practitioner that says, suck it up, you need this, please get off the table, get dressed, and go and find someone else. That's how a lot of the injuries happen. You have to know your own body because no one else can tell you what that feels like other than you. If you can keep yourself relaxed and you're breathing, maybe you're doing this thing. And I've had people clients that are like, this is pressure's fine. I'm like, no, it's, it's clearly not because you're about to burst a blood vessel in your brain. Um, if you have to answer my question that way, that's too much. And I, as a practitioner, need to observe that and lighten up a little bit on that spot. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a matter of communication right. and finding the person that works for you. And in doing medical massage, I need to know what the issues are. I need to know if you've got a bruise, what hurts, what did you tear, what did you have surgery on, are you on pain meds? Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that if your practitioner doesn't ask you, you better volunteer because we really need to know. In order to help you the most and not hurt you, we need that open communication. Now, is medical massage a particular style? Like there's hot stone massages and there's, like you said, Swedish and stuff like that. What does that actually look like? Yeah, that's a really great question. And in all of the massage magazines, probably four or five years ago, there was this debate and this divergence of the medical massage people were looking at the spa people as, <laughs> you know, doing anything. And the spa people were looking at us like snobs, you know, so there was this battle of modalities right. and they're all beneficial in their own way. Medical massage sort of became this umbrella term to distinguish themselves from slimy and sleepy. <laughs> you know, uh, the deep tissue trigger point, the sports yeah. massage, you know, versus the spa massage where they're talking very quietly and is this warm enough for you? And did you want a stone between your toes? And, you know, that kind of thing. That's, stone that's, between your toes. <laughs> that's the spa massage. Um, <laughs> Which I love, by the right. way. Just to get that out there, I love that spa massage. I don't know about the stone between my toes well, part, but I love it. It's an upcharge. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But, you know, but that's basically what the distinction was. Right. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm mocking it, but just <laughs> as exaggeration as a point. You know, the medical massage, we're really getting the work done. Right. Uh, you're going to feel what I'm doing. And my objective, because I'm a very outcome-based, little type A uh, person, mm -hmm. I want, a little bit, you probably <laughs> noticed, uh, I want to get to the root cause of the problem. I want you to walk out relaxed, but I also want you to go, oh, my God, I can turn my head more. That's right. awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's, it's a dual relationship. I can only do so much with what I'm given, and the person on the table has to help out. They have to breathe. They have to drink enough water. They have to stretch. They have to not go play, play you know, five games of tennis after they get off my table. Right. Don't undo what I just did. Um, but it's that it's that mm, that relationship of this coming and going of people and communication and that uh, exchange of right. energy and information. You brought up something when you said breathe. That was a big thing for me. And I actually learned it not from a massage therapist, but from my chiropractor. Oh, yeah. My chiropractor does this, I don't know what you call it, but he'll, he'll get into a point, before he even adjusts the bones, he'll get into a place on my back normally, or my hips, and he'll press, and he's a huge guy. He's huge. He's like tw at least twice. He's like one of those tree trunks. He's, uh -huh. like, he's just this big, giant muscle rrr, kind of guy. Like, <laughs> and he at one point was standing on his tippy toes, mm -hmm. putting all of his weight into my body. Mm -hmm. And I was screaming. I literally was just going, rrr, you know, like... Uh, and then, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. and he's like, breathe, breathe, breathe. And I'm breathing. Okay, okay, okay. And the moment his finger, his, his finger, his knuckles, whatever he was pushing in with, uh, released, there was no pain. Yeah. And all the pain that had been there before was completely gone. Mm -hmm. Just in that little thing. So he taught me how to breathe yep. into a, a, like a stroke, into mm -hmm. a movement of elongating the muscle and working through the muscle. Yep. And I don't, I've don't. i never been to a massage therapist that ever has mentioned that or said that to me. Never, ever have I been to one that's done that. Yeah, I tell people to breathe all the time. Right. Some people will start this really bizarre pattern of breathing, and they're like, I'm trying to breathe through it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they're going into the Lamaze breathing. I'm like, well, are we a boy or a girl? What are we doing it's here? coming out now. <clears throat> yeah, I hope not. I know how to do that, but that's going to be a no, mess. No, no, no. Buddy. 
Okay. So I want you to, would you like just demonstrate a little bit for us? Okay. Just in a moment? Sure. We're going to come back after the break. I just smacked my mic. We're going to come back <laughs> after the break. And I want you, just so people could see a little bit. Sure. Will you just like work on my forearm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. Right. So stay tuned. Right, We'll be right back. And we're going to see Kathy show us her stuff. All right. Ciao. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're interested, check out convergencehealingteas.com. You can try all of these yummy, delicious teas that are actually crafted in my home kitchen to help you feel better. We have a sleep well blend, a no more anxiety blend, and all of those ingredients in there are designed to help you feel better through the traditional qualities that Mother Nature has to offer. Check it out. All right, so welcome back. I am pouring myself some of my No More Anxiety tea. Can you hear that? Can you look at that? Oh, oh yeah. so nice. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Can you? <laughs> this is my No More Anxiety tea. We have a bunch of teas. I know. We have our, yes, Kathy's seen my stuff. She's been to my house. Have you been to my house? No. I you didn't come to my house. No. Oh, I have a party coming up. You have to come. Oh, okay, okay. All right, cool. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind us. We're just doing some stuff. We're just chatting. <laughs> So this is my No More Anxiety Tea. It's one of my favorite because I give it to all my clients. And it, see how fast I'm talking? I need to drink my No More Anxiety. Ah, and oh, relax. Oh, I'm breathing. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm back. Okay. All right. So Kathy has volunteered, and after I put her on the spot, <laughs> <laughs> to actually just give a sort of demonstration. So actually, we're going to move this out of the way here, Right. Uh, our little our little makeshift stands, and she's going to show us a bit of what massage is supposed to look like. So, if mm-hmm. you want to do massage at home, yeah. and actually I did an entire DVD called Therapeutic Massage at Home, nice on how to do this at home, yeah. um, one thing I'm a huge fan of is using some sort of lotion or cream, because to do this dry is incredibly uncomfortable for people, especially so that's where the slimy comes in. The slimy comes in, oh, especially right. the little fuzzies that you guys have. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, and women. Yes, because I'm so masculine. We have, yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. So you're gonna want <laughs> don't make that sound. So no boogers, we said. No so boogers. you're gonna want to take your jewelry off. I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> okay. So one thing you want to do if you're ever working on the limbs is you actually want to go towards the heart. Oh. Massage therapists should work on limbs towards the heart, okay. or else. It's not so important for us young folk, but when you're working on older people or anybody that has any sort of swelling or edema, it can actually get kind of pulled down in the limbs, so you want to move up that, no. So I'm going to have you turn this way. Okay, Okay, so I use not many thumbs, because I do six, seven, eight hours a day, and if I did thumbs all day long, I'd have have a very short career. The average lifespan, massage-wise, of a massage therapist is three to five years. That's it? Before they burn out or get hurt or go, I can't make a living doing this. So um, one of the things I do is trigger point massage. You've been doing it how long? 25. Wow, you know your stuff. I do. That's awesome. I've been doing it a long time. I I love it. I really do. The times I'm not doing massage, I I ache to get my hands on people. I really miss them, (laughs) which which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I do is trigger point massage. So let's say you're having problems with carpal tunnel. You might have wrist pain. Your hands might go numb at night. Usually it's coming from trigger points that are all the way up here. Mm. So like that one. Oh, God, that feels so good. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Wow, that's wonderful. So it's what, really tender. Yeah. So what trigger points do is it's probably what the chiropractor found on you. So a trigger point is a spot that is a section of the muscle that's gone into spasm. I feel that in my gut. Oh, it shouldn't go when, that far. Well, no. <laughs> when you're really pressing there, my yeah. gut's like, like mm-hmm. it, it's like a like a survival thing. Almost. Yeah. It's like it kicks in. Well, and what's interesting is look at the phrases we use, and I talk about this in my stress book. Mm-hmm. Are your hands full? Do you feel like you can't get a grip? What are you gripping onto too tightly? Mm-hmm. You know, we use all these phrases in our everyday life. My, sh- you know, uh, I'm shouldering the burden, the weight of the world's on my shoulders, who's yeah. the pain in my neck, mm-hmm. my heart is breaking, my heart is open. These are the phrases we use to connect that mind and body. Right. So when you go to a massage therapist, you might want to look at your language and see what your issue might be right. and see if it might be a connection to, you know, a mental, emotional thing and a spiritual thing more than just purely sure. physical. Sure, sure, sure. But... I don't know, honestly, if anything just physical really oh, exists. I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. I broke my finger doing trapeze. Okay. That was probably pretty just uh, physical. Right. Yeah, but even after you broke your finger, there was probably an emotional thing that kicked in. I like real happy. fear, like, was <laughs> it, am I, is it going to heal right? Am I going to be okay? There's a lot of things like that. Though, yeah, I'm so sort of... used to falling down now. I'm like, oh, another injury.
injury, I'll be fine. Um, but one of the things I do is I use a lot of forearms. Uh-huh. Uh, for, well, let me gesture the right part. Palm. Forearms. Forearms. And the palm of my hand. Um, knuckles are really great, and you can actually see the poor little skin on my fingers is all like completely <laughs> puffed out. I used to, have, I used to do, be a hand model, and now I just, I'm all gnarled. But it's, it's important if you're going to do massage at home not to do a lot of thumbs. I've seen people come up behind people and stick a thumb right there. You can like, feel them shaking. Yeah. This is actually not a very stable thing. Yeah. If you're going to use thumbs, put them on top of each other. Oh, interesting. Or use the thumb with your for, your, your palm of your hand on top, and you can do it that I way. I like pressing in with yep. this bone. The, this the, is really great. That one. Really, really yeah. great massage tool and mm-hmm. a good self-defense tool, because if you're uh, harassing me, oh. I can get you with that. Yeah, very versatile. <laughs> I love that. In case, in, case, in case I'm harassing her. Okay. <laughs> You're funny. No, it's, 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 it's a pathetic demonstration because you don't have lotion on. You no, it's actually, You're not particularly you, I, tight I'm not in that particularly spot. tight there. But no. it, it was, it was, I think that was important just to be able to show that little... That little thing, you know? Sometimes someplace else is causing your pain. You Absolutely. might have neck pain that's coming from down in the shoulder. Mm-hmm. You might have hand pain that's coming from the, the elbow. I had a guy come in with wrist pain, and I started up here, and he looked at me, and he goes, no, my wrist. <laughs> and I said, yes, I know where that is. <laughs> I studied anatomy. It's coming from up here. And he's like, I don't know. And you know, after a couple minutes of working up here, he's like, oh, my God, my hand on wrist pain is gone. Right. I, like, I know. Sometimes you have to act as a detective. And you know, in going through your own healing, doctors don't always have the time or the resources to solve all of our problems. Right. And sometimes we have to be our own health detective. Sure. And this is why we need a team. I don't take my computer to my oil change guy. Mm-hmm. I get somebody else to do that. Well, And that's a, a great point that I always like to emphasize. We always want a team. And we always need to act as our own health detective. Yeah. You know, again, the medical, Western medical world was amazing at putting my bones back together. Mm-hmm. You know, when my legs shattered in the little, into all kinds of little pieces, they glued, nailed, you know, stapled, whatever, those bones mm-hmm. and those ligaments all back together. Yeah. And that was a miracle. Yeah. Right? But after that, they couldn't do very much for me. Right. You know, and I, they kept giving me different diagnoses and they kept giving me different pills or suggested surgeries to help out this thing or that thing that they thought might be causing the problem and I had to act as my own detective because the healing that I did would not have happened if I would have just kept cutting myself open and doing different multiple surgeries yeah and and to me uh, and and I'm so glad we have western medicine I'm glad I could get my finger put back and I'm glad I could have my thyroid out and can now take thyroid pills I'm so happy with diagnostic tools yeah absolutely and it's tremendous absolutely but this is where I think we need that melding of Mm -hmm. that complementary alternative and eastern and western and mind body and body and surgery and visualization and you know I've had multiple surgeries for either just because I needed them or for various injuries I've had right. and uh, oh my god I, I take the steps that I have to I take that responsibility so I got the surgeon and the anesthesiologist and the nurse who's doing their job mm-hmm. my job is to then visualize do my Reiki take my homeopathic arnica do, do the massage do the chiropractic you know, make sure that I take the alternative medicine steps that I can do to enhance that healing absolutely and I heal from surgeries quicker than I mean the doctors are amazed they're like well you're you're really ahead of the curve I'm like or I'm the exception not the rule to which I say why can't I be the rule Mm -hmm. why can't everybody do this if I I can and it takes work (laughs) you know visualize all this stuff takes personal work but to me it's worth it I would rather be out of the walking boot in two weeks instead of five because six yeah yeah, because I visualized and did everything I needed to do and they always seem baffled by that but they never say how, How did, did you, you do, do that? Ah, oh, that makes me so annoyed. I, I want to tell them. Of course, they, then they go, oh, you visualize yeah. a construction worker in your body. Okay. You know, yeah. and they call someone else who comes and takes me away. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> That's very common. I can't tell you how many people who have had or who are in the process of healing really serious issues. You know, tumors, mm-hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff, right? And they, they have a, a quote-unquote miraculous healing and the doctor does not want to know how they did it. And when they tell the doctor, the doctor's eyes kind of, I've heard mm-hmm. the story so many times, the doctor's eyes sort of glazed over. Yeah. And my hope, and actually my what's been inspiring me lately is, you know, last year I was traveling all over the place and I was doing tons of teaching and you know who was in my audience? Doctors. Yeah. Yay! Doctors and mm. nurses. Yes, nurses are always miles they, ahead of that. Man, they were right there. Mm-hmm. And I 
think it's a trend. I think that the people in the allopathic world are frustrated. Mm -hmm. I think that they're tired of only relying on two basic tools. Drugs drugs and and surgery. surgery, Right? And they're actually quietly encouraging Mm because they they honestly can't, outside of that, they can't suggest a lot of stuff and have a lot of leeway. Sure. Uh, But they are quietly in encouraging their clients to go and try this or that. Mm -hmm. And when I'm seeing things like at UCLA where they're adding in acupuncturists and visualization and mindfulness and stuff like that into uh, all the different therapies that they offer Mm -hmm. at the hospital level, uh, I am so heartened by that. Yeah. It's the same way when I studied with Herbert Benson at Harvard. He has a whole mind-body medicine program, and it was me – and probably about 125 physicians, mm-hmm. which was a little overwhelming because I didn't even have my PhD then, and I'm sitting there with all these doctors. But it was really interesting. I thought, oh, God, they're going to burn me at the stake in the parking lot because I'm talking about herbs and I'm talking about visualizing. Well, that's why they were all there. Right. And because I had such – my background started out in that, they had they had no knowledge of it. Right. So I found at breaks that the doctors would come up to me and go, so you seem to know a lot about this visualization. Tell me about it. And they were asking me questions. <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, well, uh, do you, do you – Close your eyes. You know, I was like, I was terrified. You think of construction workers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's this cartoon guy with a tool. Uh, but what was cool at the end is we kind of went around the room and was allowed to share something. And I can't tell you how many physicians said they were taking this program back to their practice, mm. their hospital, mm. their clinic, mm, their coworkers, that. their staff to teach them this mind-body connection, yeah. whether it's laughter yoga or visualization or homeopathic. Eh, they didn't cover homeopathic, so that's still a little too much for them. But, uh, you so know, laughter rate, yoga was in laughter, We did laughter yoga at Harvard. At 150 oh, physicians. I love that. That's awesome. It was hysterical. Awesome. We did Tai Chi. You know, we did I'm Qigong. certified in laughter yoga. You, did you do it? Oh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. It's good stuff. But, you know, they're, they are coming around, and I think – that that's going to be the next thing is they're going to be prescribing meditation and not right. medication, which makes oh, me very happy. Oh, that makes me so happy. Okay, so back to the body work. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a totally personal question. Okay. My lovely, lovely boyfriend, Uh-huh. Uh, I, when I first met him, just because I just, when I get somebody, I'm holding somebody or, you know, oh, yeah. I immediately do the like, I'm like, yeah, right there. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> he's doing that whole, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. He's so sensitive, right? Mm-hmm. And I got him to relax, and I got him to breathe, and I'm like, look, I'm just going to press right into this point. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I know it feels like a lot of pressure, right. but I'm not putting a lot of pressure in there. Mm-hmm. And I want you just to breathe, and I want you to notice what happens. And now I can actually get into him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I can, I can do, it's a very light massage, but I can do kind of a little massage like that. Yeah. And at one point, he had woken up and he couldn't move his neck. He was oh. so stiff. He was like, you know, doing that thing. You know, <laughs> Turn your whole body to look around. Yeah, you have to do that. Oh. <laughs> He's doing that thing. And I'm like, come here. He's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, get over here. And I went into his shoulder, mm-hmm. like you said, right? Like, it's not the wrist, it's the elbow. Mm-hmm. Right? And I just intuitively, because I'm not trained in this, and I carefully intuitively just sort of went in there, uh-huh. and I worked on his shoulder and on, like, I don't even know what it's called. Trapezius. Your trapezius. <laughs> See, your trapezius. I learned something mm-hmm. new. I actually knew that, just didn't remember that. Uh. All right. <laughs> so I worked into the trapezius, and what's right under the trapezius? Rhomboid. It's rhomboid. There we go. I worked right into there, and within just a few minutes, he could turn his head mm-hmm. completely, you know? And he was willing to just walk around like this sure. all day. Like, he just, like, don't touch me. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, what would you say to somebody like that, that may be listening to us right now? It's their choice if they want to suffer. Sure. Uh, what, did, what is the quote? Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. <laughs> That's very true. Something's going to hurt you, emotionally, physically, spiritually. But what might you say to actually encourage them to, to sort of get over their fear or to step out of that fear experience? I don't know if sometimes it's fear so much as it is, uh, I don't want to say self-abuse because that sounds really harsh, but there are people that don't feel like they deserve it. They don't feel like they deserve to be out of pain. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they deserve to, quote, treat themselves, to which I say, oh, massage is not a treat. It's health. Yeah. Uh, So I think that it's an issue of being gentle with yourself. And just like I say, you don't have a newborn baby and stand it up and say, walk, and then chastise it when it falls over. 
you give it time. Right. So giving it time. The other thing is a lot of people, and this is a whole other show, but there's this secondary gain mm-hmm. of being in pain. Sure. And I have had clients say, oh my God, I love when my back goes out because then my husband cleans. <laughs> That's not good. <clears throat> and they're happy mm-hmm. to lay on the couch and read their book with the cat on their lap and mm-hmm. watch their husband clean. To which I say, well, but is that worth it? Right. There's a couple other options. Get a housekeeper mm-hmm. or say to the husband, God, you know, I really would love it if you could vacuum once a week for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. It's about knowing what your needs are and opening up to them. Or just fake it. Right. <laughs> Wait, no, that's wrong. No, we don't want to fake it. Take that back. Cut that out. Right. Yeah, you know, but it is. It's that communication and, <laughs> yeah. and being good enough to yourself. And usually, we don't recognize that there's secondary gain. Right. We're not like I'm doing this because of that. You know, sure. it's, a, it's a far away thing that we notice that. Sure. But that staying stuck thing has a big benefit, actually. Yeah. We just have to get past that. Absolutely. Thank you. So the advice is: take a deep breath and just do it. Go for it. That's my motto. Yeah. And we'll be right back. (laughs) See you guys in a minute. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're interested, check out ConvergenceHealingTeas.com. You can try all these yummy, delicious teas that are actually crafted in my home kitchen to help you feel better. We have a sleep well blend, a no more anxiety blend, and all of those ingredients in there are designed to help you feel better through the traditional qualities that Mother Nature has to offer. Check it out. Buy it. It's not like they're assuming that there's something else happening. Right. right? <laughs> but then if I go to you know a different person and there's that room and it's all closed in and, and you're in the hallway and you hear this, uh, like there could be a lot of assumptions. Mm-hmm. But I'm a groaner. I am. Mm-hmm. And I found that when I allow myself to go to let my vocal, uh, to have that vocal experience, yep. whatever that is, that actually helps the mm-hmm. muscles let go. Yep. Why? Why does that work? I don't know that I can answer why, but I know a lot of people do it, and we just automatically do that. I mean, like, if we're trying to lift something heavy, what do we do? (laughs) We make that noise. Uh, It's this primal, guttural thing (laughs) that just happens. And it's funny because I have clients who try to hold back noise, (laughs) which becomes even more... So they'll be like, mother... (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, y- you can swear. You can say it. I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's okay. I've heard it before. You know. So then they let out the string of swear words. Yeah. I have one guy, one guy who will get very quiet. He won't say anything for like ten minutes, right. and out of the clue blue sky, he'll go, "Yeah, <laughs> really." And I don't know if he feels like he should say something, and that's what he came up with. But yeah, it'll be totally. And I just start to laugh. I quite yeah. silently laugh because it's just funny. That, yeah, you know, just out of the clueless guy. And I had one little Hispanic lady. I loved her. She would go, "I yeah yeah, Karuma, Jesus Christ!" <laughs> and I would laugh every time. And she finally said, "Why are you laughing at me?" And I said, "Honey, it's so long. I yeah yeah, Karuma, Jesus Christ. That's a long thing to say. That's not like ow or uh. That's a long lots of syllables." There's a lot of letters there. Jesus Christ. So that's what she would say. She was adorable. And she, for some reason, that's what she said. Um, but yeah, oh, I've been called names. Um, oh, I've been sworn at. I've been cursed. I've had people go, I'll tell you the secrets. Um, somebody, I had a, an older gentleman who was a really famous artist say, my God, girl, if you put on a leather skirt, you could charge a hundred bucks more. You know, and, like, so, and then I thought, really? No. Um, <laughs> So people just every you know there's people that are funny and people who are just very serious about the whole you know they're very intense right, about the right, whole thing. Right. Uh, it's just to me I love making my clients laugh. Right. Clearly I love to laugh. <laughs> uh, you know so this is where I don't I would never be okay in that spa environment if I had to address people as Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Right. And, you know where I pick the right. cloth up now and deal with them. I could I because I want to if they want to I mean if they want to lay there and sleep that's mm. one thing but I love being funny and telling jokes and and making mm-hmm. them laugh especially at that height of that that's a really tight muscle and that has to let go I'll say right. something to make them laugh right and everything just goes right that's great it's beautiful. that's so sweet I love that and I wanted to really bring that up because when people say things to me like my practitioner my clients or whatever and they say well oh, I'm nervous about it I don't like it or I feel uncomfortable. I'm, I wanted you who are listening or watching this to actually know that you're okay. Yeah. And that you can make noises, you can express mm-hmm. while you're being touched. And I think that's so important. And I want to add, we don't care if your legs are hairy. <laughs> we don't care if you fart. Mm-hmm. We don't care if your hair looks bad. We don't think you're fat. We're not judging you. And that is so important because I've had a lot of 
heavier women who they don't want to show their bodies. Right. And I, I've seen it all. Yeah. And if I haven't seen it before, I wouldn't know what it was anyway. My job is as a healer. Mm. And I had one woman, she was a, a larger woman, she actually unfortunately passed last year, um, who, as she was getting on the table, soiled herself. Mm. And it was a mess. Mm. And I'm waiting for her to get on the table, waiting, and I didn't hear anything, and I thought, oh my God, did she fall? Is she okay? And I finally walked in the room, and I found her in the corner, crying. Oh, the and she said, thing. Kathy, I think I made a mess. And right. she had she had She'd fecal matter right. all over herself. Oh. And I said, okay. And I put on my gloves, and I got the baby wipes, and I wiped her ass. Right. Oh, because that's thing. our job as a healer. Oh, I love you. And that's I, so <laughs> sweet. But I didn't even think about it. I mean, there wasn't yeah. this thought of, I guess I better. I mean, it was just instinct of right. here's a human being who's vulnerable. Mm. My job is as a healer to help. And that's why when you guys do choose a massage therapist, you need to choose someone like Kathy. You need to choose someone yeah. who's trained and educated and compassionate and loving. And, you know, you can go to the $20 person down the street. It's not that you can't do that. Oh, can we talk about that? Sure. Okay. Sure. I've had great experiences with the $20, you know, guy down the street. Especially when I don't, I'm all of a sudden I get a nod or I'm in a sure. driving home and I'm like, oh, I'm just walk in and see if they have anything available. Right. That's been a great thing. But what, what's your experience? The, the downside of that, and I totally get that immediacy because I'm booked up two or three weeks. You right. know, I do try to make exceptions. You say, I just fell on the stairs or, oh my God, I can't walk. I will come in early. I'll skip lunch. I'll move a client. All of my clients understand that if I call them and say, Pierre, oh my God, can I please move you to next week? Right. They, there's a reason. There's a reason. And you know, I'll do that for you too right. when there's a problem. Um, a lot of the massage parlors, and I'm going to call them that, sure. um, a lot of them are either doing human trafficking or sex trafficking. Ooh. That is a enormous problem in the massage community. Is and in, okay. I'm in Santa Barbara, and between Santa Barbara and Galito, which is the little town north, you know, right connected to us, we have 47 sex massage parlors. Wow, really? Every single one, I'm not being racist, every single one is Asian. Uh -huh. uh, that tends to be... That's the demographic. That's the demographic. Sure. Uh, and they are either straight prostitution or sex trafficking. Wow. Or human trafficking. So and people forced to yes. do these... Uh, or they yeah. know what they're getting into, but they feel like they can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And I actually did some work with the, the local authorities to help stop them. I would go in and find these places and research them and investigate them and help them shut them down. Right. Because people are being tortured. Right. Now, I, I'm... Tor tortured. You know, they're being abused. abused. Um, so I'm not saying every place you pop into is doing that. But consider that. Right. Uh, and I had a lot of people in Santa Barbara who went, you mean I can't pop in and get my $20 foot rub? <laughs> and I said, no, you can. Right, just go but, to the right uh, place. But understand those people might be there against their will, or right. they're not making any money, or they're all sleeping on the floor in the back and they're right. being charged for that. Right. So it's just, it's a growing problem. And there was an article a couple months back in Backpage who is one of the major advertisers for the human and sex trafficking. Ugh, there was a I've big lawsuit, and they a few years. yeah shut it down. And there's mm -hmm. rub maps, and there's all these mm -hmm. different websites that mm -hmm. you can go to to see if these places are advertising sex. Oh, I didn't um, know. So just be aware. And I was actually doing work with the local authorities to help find these places and investigate them and, and get them shut down because these people are either there completely against their will, not knowing where they are. They tend to shuffle the girls from place to place. Mm. So if you see a big sign that says under new management or you see an ad all new girls, if you're doing legitimate massage, you, you don't, don't really need care. to yeah. advertise that. So, mm. you know, they shuffle them from place to place. A lot come up from L.A. to Santa Barbara and then keep going into other states. It's, it's a huge ring. Wow. And a lot of the online sources like Backpage and there's things called Rub Maps and Erotic MP and things like that are advertising that. So just, wow. just be aware if you're smelling food and if you're seeing things that might look like people are living there, <laughs> you often don't get to see those things. I, I did because I'm sneaky. Uh, but... Uh, just be aware that something not great might be going on. Right, and that's uh, that's an important awareness. Thank you for letting me know that. I'm thinking back to my place, and most of the people at my place are students, so we're good. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I, we're going to wrap up now, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of our viewers. And before we go, Kathy, will you tell people how to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all my books are available on my website, which is thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. There's also kathygroover.com, which is the majority of my speaking work. I have had the privilege of lecturing around the world. I just visited my seventh country doing uh, nice. stress workshops. So very excited about that. I've got five books. I've got a massage DVD teaching you how to do massage at home. Better demonstration than what I did on Peter's arm. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I've got a lot of free resources. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you get a super free secret health video. So awesome. I like that. And if people want to connect with you on social media, do oh, you have a hashtag? Uh, 
a couple, unfortunately. Uh, Twitter is KL Groover, and then Facebook is Dr. Kathy Groover, and awesome. uh, YouTube is Dr. Kathy Groover. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thanks I for having me. I love you. I love you too. You're awesome. Thanks I can't for having wait me. August. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> To everybody out there, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in either on SoundCloud or through the Reverie platform. We are excited to have you, and I'm grateful that you're listening. If you have any suggestions for us, please just give me a call, basically. Send me a message through ConvergenceHealing.com. Make comments on, on these videos or, the, or our SoundCloud account, and let us know what you want to hear. All right, take care. Love yourself. Be good to yourself. Nurture yourself. Right? Get a massage. Get a massage. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.